Hey guys, this is Grace from Design Sponge, and today I'm going to be talking about how to get the word out, which for me means promotion without the ick factor. Now, I think it's important before you get started with promotion to think about why it's so important to promote in the first place. The first and most important point for me is that you've worked really hard, and when you work really hard on something and you love it and believe in it, you should be showing it to people. And I think it can be uncomfortable sometimes for people because they think it can be a little gross to be the one who does the talking. But if you think about it, more than any publicist or PR agency, you know the hard work and the love and the motivation that goes into what you do. And nothing is going to express that quite in the same way you are. So don't be afraid to be the person who actually does the reaching out. Second, your readers and customers have tons of options, and if you're not out there waving your hand reminding them about the great things you do, then you're going to lose out. So being sure that you have promotion as part of your business arsenal is crucial to keeping your customers' attention. And last but not least, but both readers for blogs and customers can be forgetful, and they're really quick to move if they feel like things aren't changing quickly, or that there aren't new updates on a regular basis. So promotion is a great way to remind them that there are things changing and exciting new things happening on a regular basis. Now, what are the some of the main reasons to write people for outreach? The first is the most obvious, which is announcing something new, and this means legitimately new. Maybe you have a brand new company or a brand new product that has not been written about before. That's probably the greatest reason to reach out to somebody. But the reason that we're probably all most familiar with is when you're announcing something that's added to an existing company or changed to a group that already is around. This could mean that if you're a blogger, you're adding a new column, or that if you run an Etsy shop, you've announced some new product that's been added. But it's something that's not brand, brand new. It's sort of a second level of new. And the last would be requesting participation. This is my favorite way to reach out to people. For example, if you're a blogger and you want to be involved with a readership that maybe is outside of your niche, maybe you're a design blog and you want to be a part of the food blog net or the food blogging world, maybe you'll request a food blogger to guest blog. And if they're actually involved in your site, they're way more likely to actually mention your site. They might do a post on it, um, but they're way more likely to participate in promoting your blog if they're actually part of it. So consider reaching out to people to be a part of what you actually do. It's a very sort of cohesive way to get them to be involved in promoting your site that feels comfortable and genuine. Now, the main forms of contacting people are pretty simple. The first is a personal email, and this is my favorite mode of communication. You can write someone blogger to blogger, or you can actually just write a, a member of the press this way. It's simple, it's short, and it's sweet, and for me, it's the easiest way to contact people. The next is a newsletter, and a newsletter can be free, easy, and cheap to send, and it gives your readers a great way to read quickly via email. And the last is social networking, which is something I think we're all familiar with, but can be a really, really valuable tool in terms of promoting your business in a casual, quick, and easy way. How often you should write or update people depends on the way you're contacting them. For me, I think personal email should just be as needed. If you update something once a month, that's totally fine. But if you have a business or a blog that's updated on a regular basis, maybe even weekly, just be sure that you okay that with the blogger or press outlet you're sending to to make sure that they're all right to receive that many emails from you on a regular basis. For a newsletter, I prefer to get them monthly because I think it's nice to get everything in a digest form rather than one email for one tiny update. But if you do have a lot of new products added, let's say you're a shop and you add a lot of products by other designers on a regular basis, just make sure that people reading your newsletter have a very clear opt-in and opt-out button. And the last is Twitter and Facebook. I really strongly feel this is something that should be a part of your daily life. That might seem like a little too much, but if you think about it, this should be somewhere where you're making casual, common, off-the-cuff type of comments, and it should be easy for you to do without thinking. It shouldn't require planning ahead. It shouldn't have to be super carefully crafted. It should be a place for you to be casual and comfortable with both your readers and your clients. Now, here are some rule of thumbs for making sure that you are doing your email communication as efficiently and as effectively as possible. Now, the first thing to remember is that you have the correct name and spelling and title level of the people you're reaching out to. If you're emailing a blogger, make sure you have the right blog name, that you're not using a form letter and contacting everybody. And make sure that if you're contacting somebody at a magazine, that if you're choosing to email them, that they're not somebody way up at the tippity top of a magazine. It's really best to only email people who are sort of at the editor or associate editor level because editors in chief really aren't involved in sort of the day-to-day -day workings of a magazine, so always make sure that you're keeping in mind that it's somebody who's sort of midway down the uh, masthead of a magazine. The next is, when you're emailing somebody, you want to offer them something different or exclusive that other people aren't going to get. 
That can be an advanced look at something. It could be a sort of special angle on the story. It can be extra pictures that somebody else didn't get. Just try to have that little bit of extra angle in there when you're reaching out to somebody via email. And if you are reaching out via email and have new things to share, make sure that you only share it in JPEG form. PDFs and PowerPoints can get easily corrupted via email, so always keep things simple with JPEGs. And lastly, if you have a company email, for example, mine would be grace at designsponge.com, make sure that you use that rather than a Gmail address. I am the worst person at this and I'm still using my Gmail address, but it's hard to let go. But if you're sending someone emails in terms of a, you know, a press reach out, it just looks far more professional to use your business name if you have one. Now, if you choose to email or contact people via a newsletter, here are some good things to remember. The first is, a newsletter should be something extra and different compared to what you normally do. If you're a blogger and sending out a newsletter that's just a digest of what happens on the site, you're less likely to get people to follow in a more excited and a more detailed way. So what you want to do is offer them something they're not going to see somewhere else. Maybe this is a discount or an advanced peak. Just keep in mind that a newsletter should be something that goes above and beyond what they'd normally get from you. Now, another thing to remember is that you should be offering in your newsletter a non-HTML or a plain text option, which doesn't have images, it's just text, because not everybody can get the fancy emails with fancy layouts, so be sure that you offer a plain version. Now, when it comes to sending a newsletter, there are a lot of options out there, so I have chosen three of my favorites. The first is MailChimp. It's free, up to 500 subscribers, it's incredibly user-friendly, and it integrates really nicely with social tools like Twitter. It also goes really nicely with PayPal and analytics. If you've never used a newsletter uh, service before, MailChimp is the great place to start. At Design Sponge, we use a service called AWeber, which unfortunately doesn't have a free option, but it's a really, really excellent option if you're concerned about things getting through spam filters because they have a great rate of deliverability, and they also have lots of great custom options for forms if that's something you're going to be sending to your customers and readers. And last, if you want to keep things super simple, you can always use FeedBlitz or FeedBurner to create an email version of your website or your blog's RSS feed. It's just a really simple way to give people another option to keep up to date with what's happening. Now, if you're concerned about social networking, there are definitely some guidelines to follow in terms of how to promote. The first is to remember this sort of crucial ratio in terms of what you're talking about. I think it should always be one-third business, one-third personal, and one-third resources, meaning that a third of your tweets or your Facebook updates are related to your business or your blog, a third are just small personal musings, maybe interesting things that happen during your day or during the week, and one-third should be resources that are completely outside of your site but that will be valuable to your customers or your readers. And to find those, that just means that you have to be actively participating in the social network world to find great links to share. Next, be sure that you participate and don't get pushy online. And this is really crucial when it comes to promotion because let's say, for example, you see someone on Twitter who has a lot of followers talking about a niche that you work in. If you work in that niche, the last thing you want to do is just constantly talk to them and say, I make that too, or check this out. That's a great way to just pay attention and say, oh, so-and-so is talking about lighting today. I'm going to go to their website, find their email, and send them an email. I think it's a really, really good rule of thumb to stick to email when it comes to promotion. It's totally fine to mention someone on Twitter once that you make something in that category, but if you keep doing it over and over again, you sort of build up a reputation as the person who only uses Twitter to promote their business. So just make sure that you participate in conversations and use that as a way to find people who are talking about what you already do. The last is, don't call out customers, readers, or clients online. You can get a lot of, of feedback from that. It may not be feedback that you want, and you can burn some bridges. So I personally feel that if you have an axe to grind, it's really not the best place to do it online unless you feel you have no other choice and that's the only way that you can get to somebody. But keep in mind that your readers or your customers may not want to hear it. So always think twice before posting something that might be a little bit negative or ranty. Now, I wanted to share a couple outside of the box ideas that could be considered promotion that I think are really nice ways to promote your company without sort of getting traditional or press releasey about things. Now, for me, that's a blog collaboration. I love this idea because it's a le very comfortable, legitimate way to sort of share audiences with people without getting gross. Let's say, for example, that you have a business or a blog in a specific niche. Let's say that that niche is design. If you want to break into maybe the parenting market because parents also live in homes, you could team up with a parent blog. Maybe you do posts that you share on everybody's sites. Maybe you do a joint contest. It's a really nice way to team up with somebody and have them write about your blog without having to send a formal press 
release. Also, I hope these tools will help you and good luck with your outreach.